All right, media, we're going to officially get started here. Um, congrats again to Candace Park on winning the 2020 Defensive Player of the Year Award. We'll jump right into questions. We'll start with Doug Feinberg with the Associated Press. Hey, Ace, congrats on the uh, Defensive Player of the Year Award. Thank you. Kind of strange. I mean, I don't know what you did differently this year. Did you focus more on defense that got you this award? I mean, you've been in this league for a while and won many different awards, but what did you do differently? What does it mean to be recognized as the best defender in, in this league? It means a lot. Um, I think rebounding was a huge focus coming into this year just because I realized that we won a championship because of rebounding and we lost a championship because of rebounding. And so I think that was a huge focus for me individually coming in is just making sure that we're able to, you know, secure the, secure the rebound, finish the possession, be able to get out in transition because that's when we're at our best. And so, like I said, coach T has been huge and, you know, our team's development and as well as my development just defensively and her philosophy. And I think it does take a year where everybody can kind of get the philosophy and get, um, you know, get the schemes and things like that. And then this year kind of put it together. And, you know, when you have players on your team that are able to lock up their own, you have Slim on the team, you got, you know, TRP, you got NECA, um, you got a number of amazing individual defenders and it's able to kind of keep everybody from rotating and then you can kind of handle your own and secure the rebound. And so I think that uh, we did a pretty good job of that this year. Holly Rowe, ESPN. Hey, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, part of this bubble situation was your body feeling better and you being at your best physically. And um, what were some things you were able to do differently this year because you felt so good? Well, Holly, it was amazing to like literally wake up, eat breakfast in five minutes, I'm at the gym, as opposed to, you know, how LA traffic is, you're in traffic for almost an hour. Then you got to go to the game, go to shoot around, come back. And so for me, it was just like, we were able to kind of limit the amount of time that we were, we weren't flying. You know, we were 15, 20 minutes from the gym, five minutes from practice. Uh, and so the time that I would use normally to commute, I just used to, to take care of my body. Uh, I, my whole room, my whole apartment was basically a training room. I had every device that possible known to man. And so I think it's just, I really want to take that focus and that time from this year into next year, regardless of whether we're in the bubble or we're out, like really focusing on narrowing your focus because that's what the bubble I think did to all of us. Go to Ari Chambers with Bleacher Report. Hey, Candace girl, congratulations. Thank you told you. Elena, B, I know I keep bringing this story up, but you told her that she couldn't retire after Defensive Player of the Year. Now you've won it and we know you're not going anywhere, but what's so special about this, reward, uh, this award in general? And like, what does it tell you about yourself? You know, I definitely think that this, this is gonna go above MVPs and Rookie of the Year. Um, I think for me, the first, coach that really challenged me and told me that I could be defensive player of the year was coach summit. And I hear her line, you know, offense sells tickets, defense wins games, rebounding wins championships. And I know like everybody from Tennessee that has hit me, um, has told me that, you know, she's up there smirking saying you could have done this earlier. And, you know, I think it's better late than never, but <clears throat> honestly, it's just being around great teammates. I played with two defensive players of the year and Elena Beard and Lisa Leslie, and it really is a mindset. And um, I'm really thankful to, and I'm really proud of this, honestly, um, of this award. We'll go over to Howard Megdahl, next hoops. Thanks, Eli. And Candace, congratulations. Thank you. I'm curious, when it, you, know, you obviously had a terrific year defensively this year, but this is also, if you go back and look at your career accomplishments, not new. You're, you're fourth all time in defensive win shares in this league, and the three ahead of you uh, all had previously won defensive player of the year. So how much of this is your reputation catching up to the player you've been, and how much of this is an actual legitimate improvement in 2020? That's a really good question. I think just um... – because of in years past, people think I take lapses and I take time off and things like that in terms of plays. 
I think that that really truly affected the way that people maybe looked at the game and looked at the way that I defend. Um, and I think I took it as a challenge this year. I really, um, I feel like you got to utilize what you're good at and you got to make people play the way, you know, play the way that you're good at. And so I try to use my, my length and um, my quickness when I'm playing against, against size. And like I said, defensively, defensive rebounding. I mean, you guys watched the last dance. Like I really paid attention to Dennis Rodman's philosophy of like, he would look at angles and how the ball would come off and things like that. And so I think it's just, I've had to be a little bit smarter my 13th year. And I don't know whether that should have been the way that I was playing all along, but just in terms of really studying the opponent and, and being, you know, being up to date with how, how the game is played, you got to be a lot smarter and you got to use less energy, I, I would say. So I think that's, um, that's what I take from year 13, but I honestly, the reputation thing, I really don't want to be known as just an offensive player. And, um, you know, whether this changes the narrative or not, I, you know, I hope going forward that um, continue to play both sides of the ball. Latrina Robinson, ESPN. Hey, Candice, um, congratulations. Thank you. I'm just curious, you know, what do you think has changed about being a great defender over the course of your career as the WNBA has just grown from an overall skill perspective? Um, you know, when you look at what players are doing today versus maybe when you first came into the league, what is required of a defender, do you think, that's different now than maybe was when you came in? You know, honestly, it's, it's, that's a really good question because, you, you know, we've seen the way that the NBA has kind of changed and the, the way that the Tony Allens and, you know, obviously we still have Patrick Beverly's, but they're, you know, you got to be able to do something else. You got to be able to knock down a three. You got to be able to, you know, and you got to bring value because guys are just too good individually. And we're seeing that in the women's game as well. Just, you're not going to have those individual lockdown defenders you got to be able to play within a system and I think the WNBA has grown so much in the skill set of being able to be in the right place in your scheme um, you know I think I benefit from playing like I said earlier with amazing athletic long um, players and so you know, you don't have to rotate as much and you don't get exposed. You, you can come back and you can actually be in front of your person that you're defending on offense to get the rebound. So I think it's just a lot of the philosophy going into de defense and how you're going to defend. And then the three ball completely changed the game just because now you're more spread out. So I think the women's game is headed in the right direction and we're getting more scoring, but it doesn't mean that we're not defending um, with the same uh, tenacity or, or desire as we were before, just because the, the scores are increasing. We'll go over to Nick Hamilton, Nightfall Media. Hey, Candace, congratulations on the award. Thank you. Uh, you spoke earlier about just focus, and I know you probably one of the busiest defensive player of the years as far as your schedule goes, obviously preparing for games, but also being a great analyst and a mother on top of that. How were you able to lock in and really focus in on, on the defensive side of basketball and, and really, you know, helping your team as well? This year in the bubble, um, I didn't mind it. You know, I had my family. I was able to have basketball right there. There's a gym. My daughter and I would go work out uh, a bunch of times. You, you're watching every WNBA game because it's right there. I mean, you know who plays who on whatever days. Uh, so I think it's just, it was the narrowed focus. Uh, the bubble required it. And I think it benefited a lot of individuals and a lot of teams um, just to be able to focus on basketball. And so I think that's what, what I did was just trying to lock in and, you know, get the scheme and, and, and watch as much tendencies. I think a lot of times, you know, <laughs> I always say this when I'm watching, especially, you know, the WNBA finals or the NBA finals, if you let a great player do what they want to do every time down the court, they're going to score every time. That's just how just offensively gifted people are in these professional leagues. And so you got to figure out what you want to take away and make them do something you don't want to. And that comes with like knowing how people play. 
And so I think I, I take pride in knowing tendencies. Now, whether I can stop them, I don't know, but um, just in terms of knowing the tendencies is key. Time for a couple more. We'll go over to Chelsea from Texas Weekly. Hey, Candace. <laughs> it's your point guard here. Um, <laughs> really nice hair, hair you got there. Um, this is more or less of a question, rather a statement that I'm super proud of you. you. Um, congratulations. You know, I think being around you, you see all this flack and all the people that, you know, talk and have no idea the capabilities that you're able to do on both ends of the floor. And I don't mean to get emotional, but <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you deserve the hell out of this award. Thank you. And um, you know you can't take it back. So anytime <laughs> after this, if you get beat middle, you know I'm yelling. <laughs> and if you don't so rebound and you get pushed under, I'm going to be yelling. <laughs> I so, can't um, stand you. <laughs> I know Layla's proud. I know your family's proud. I'm glad you're able to celebrate it with them. And I'm glad to just be your teammate. So congratulations. And um, don't get B-middle in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea. You know you mean the world to me. Um, and honestly, I cannot wait to get on the court with you again, honestly. And I know we talk all the time, but you are a special player. You are a special individual. And Man, I'm just so lucky to have you as a teammate. So I really appreciate you hopping on. Eli, you didn't have, you could have, you played me. Because, you know, real Gs don't cry. But I'm on here getting emotional, Eli. But, all right, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Eli hit Chelsea from Texas. <laughs> all right. <laughs> take a couple more here um we'll go over to um sorry there's a little technical difficulty uh michelle are you able to michelle espn are you able to unmute yourself Okay, so I think the um, – all right, well, and Zoom appears to be a little bit down, but I think Chelsea's was a good note to end on. So we'll, um, we'll send out this recording, and thank you so much, and congrats thank again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.